Hello, everyone. Are you ready for a new story? Tonight's tale is called Fish McDonough Selling Thoughts and Prayers. When we last left Fish McDonough, he had been banished from the kingdom to the far, far east, along with the shaman, the leader of the QAnon cult, and the rest of his allies and devoted flock. Fish was a broken man now, a mere shadow of his former super cop self. He was noticeably subdued. His trademark boastful and arrogant demeanor seemed to have abandoned him. But Fish knew that he would have to hang low for a while, even feign humility for a bit. But every night in his nightmares, he fought against his worst fears petrified that he would be reduced to nothing more than carving memes on the face of Mount Book, sending out tweeting songbirds locally to his closest family and friends, announcing nothing more than happy hour get-togethers at the local pizza joint. And Benji and his blood monkey fleas? They had escaped the Fish McDonish cult and were never heard from again thus leaving Fish's legion of foot soldiers depleted and demoralized, and wondering if their little society was suddenly to become bereft of leadership. For months they all wallowed aimlessly in depression and nervously licked their deep wounds after their devastating defeat at the hands of Nomadicus Trekus at the Battle of the Big Lie. They had lost their warrior legs gorging on barbecue chicken wings and drowning their sorrow on homemade ale and witch's brew at meteor ping pong. There was an ominous and growing restlessness and unease in the air. The stinging blow they had been dealt by the good and honest people of the realm still burned and had taken its toll. But off in the distant realm, Eutubicus, was willing its lord back to the top of the mountain. It began as vague whispers, easily confused with the wind, but as more time passed, the noise became deafening and the message was clear. And fish would not resist its beck and call. So finally, McDonish called a meeting he assembled the most loyal and unscrupulous of his allies. He sent for Shaman, Yum, Yes, You're Welcome, Investigate, The Tab, and Miffany Turee, and many more. He also sent for B.A., the Brothers of Arion, and the Watchmen. He knew the sovereign citizen cult movement could be useful to him. They had served him well in the past by procuring false documents, and fabricating evidence to successfully persuade his gullible flock. Fish turned a blind eye, even possibly unaware of his ally's shady, criminal, immoral, and lawless past. He even was willing to look past their anti-cop behavior and disdain for law enforcement. He may or may not have been informed yet that some among them had a well-documented history of harassing cops and weaving tall tales about cop abuse or their anarchist sovereign citizen audits on honest law enforcement. Was he aware of all of their prior fraudulent claims against peace, of peace officers and the good people of the realm? Or did it just not matter? And Fish reckoned that in times of war, the enemies of my enemy are my friends. So even though some of his newfound allies had a shady past of thuggery and illegal behavior, including even hateful body art and proudly wearing the symbology of ancient holocaust and the enslavement of the people of the realm, he simply sought to exploit their longing for chaos and desire to again oppress the people of the realm. You see, 
McDonish was never an intelligent man. He had no interest or desire for vetting or doing his homework on people. He simply saw everyone as a pawn, possibly useful to eventually call on for some future transaction, which could benefit him in some way. For example, he infamously did not vet the Lost Child Foundation, whose leader was being investigated for fraud, even caught on a mic talking about his true motives. They had lied about liberating kidnapped children and had raised funds on the back of QAnon rallies led by shamans. But maybe Old Fish was smarter than many thought. For that promotion served him quite well and only endeared him to many in the QAnon cult. It was not coincidental that he chose to ally with the shaman. There were many crossover beliefs between the two clans. They were both highly religious, believed in the coming apocalypse, and longed for the necessary preconditions of chaos and disaster to fulfill their eschatological beliefs in the supernatural and the second coming of Gosh. And McDonish was always easily susceptible to the whims and fancies of more clever persons. He was famously naive and often the object of pranks and misinformation. In the case of the missing girl Shummer, for example, he swallowed whole doctored drawings of her with noticeable bruises and he presented them to his flock, despite it being obvious to all those with a discerning eye that this was propaganda fed to him to make him look foolish or to forward the interests of other interested parties, possibly those who shared his loathing of Shummer's father, Sean Welsh. But Fish, always the opportunist and salesman, managed to capitalize, even on a prank, or a false document. These mistakes of judgment could always be turned in his favor somehow and ultimately serve his interests well. So on that day, at that meeting, standing on a small mound of earth, he began his speech. People of the McDonish clan and to all my subjects and allies, we must unite. We must and will grow our channels together. We must again appeal to the power of clickbait, false accusations, sophistry, and bullying to take back what is rightfully ours. But we need a plan, my friends. And that plan is to appeal to the emotions and insecurities of the people. We shall choreograph and orchestrate our message together by appealing to the supernatural. We shall call this the battle of good versus evil, and we will portray ourselves as the, as the saviors. We shall defeat the enemies of the great creator of the universe, Gosh. We shall demean and castigate all of our enemies and refer to them as evil. We shall refer to all of them as demons and zombies of evil, as sheep. We shall accuse them of all of being possessed by Byron the Stranger, Benji, and of course, we shall spread more false stories about Nomadicus Trekkus. He is, after all, our nemesis. It is he who is responsible for our fall from grace. It is he who exposed us and had us banished from our homes and me from my rightful place atop Mount Eutubicus. And we shall project ourselves as the savior of children and lost souls. We will endow ourselves with a divine mission. We will convince the people of the realm to continue to sponsor our cause by donating to the McDonish clan. And we will all repeat the name Shummer constantly. We will repost her image everywhere and feign a deep concern. We shall use her image and name as the symbol that we stand for everything good and noble, while our enemies, soulless, uncompassionate, and evil. We shall sell my minstrel song to support our cause. 
We shall let everyone know that if they believe in Gosh, if they wish to stop evil, if they care about children, if they wish to get to heaven and survive the apocalypse, they can prove their commitment and moral righteousness by purchasing my romantic songs about Gosh. Now, go out and make it so, my loyal sycophants. We shall return to Mount Eutubagus together. We shall seize the realm again and contort it in our own image. Now begin spreading my thoughts and prayers to all the others. The now frothing and excited crowd who had assembled began in earnest by throwing super chats, chanting Shummer's name, and singing his minstrel song. The ministry of Colt McDonish was now open for business. The end.